Welcome to our lecture online and to get an even better idea of what quarks are, let's go look at some of the particles that quarks make. Remember that quarks make hadrons and of course with hadrons you have the baryons which require three quarks and then you have the mesons which require two quarks, one quark and one antiquark. So let's take a look at the baryons that they create and notice of all the baryons they create there's only one, a proton, that is stable. All other particles made from quarks end up being unstable and decay very quickly. The only particle that does not decay very quickly is the neutron. A free neutron will last for about 920 seconds, which is roughly 15 minutes before it decays. And that's a free neutron, a neutron which is contained within a nucleus, will typically last a whole lot longer than that, which is a good thing for us, otherwise matter would decay very quickly. So what we can see here is uh, all the various particles that are being formed and of course there are several hundred baryons that are created from quarks and we only have a small subset here, the more famous ones, the more familiar ones. So we have the proton and the neutron which make up nuclei uh, of atoms. We have the neutral lambda particle, we have the charmed lambda and the bottom lambda. We have the positive sigma, the neutral sigma and the negative sigma. We have the neutral xi and the negative xi, and we have the charmed omega and the bottom omega. And they're just kind of representative of the, some of the more common particles. Although I would say the charmed and the bottom lambda and the charmed and bottom omega are not as common, but yet, you know, part of the set that tends to get created when we do a lot of research work in our nuclear accelerators. Now, notice the charge, either they're neutrally charged, positively charged, or negatively charged, depending upon which quarks make up that particular, um, that particular baryon. Notice that the up quarks have a positive two-thirds charge and the down quark has a negative one-third, so a positive two-thirds twice minus one-third is a positive charge. Two negative one-thirds and a positive charge give you zero charge. You can see that the, the strange quark has the same charge as a down quark, minus one-third, so two minus one-thirds plus a up two-thirds is neutral. Notice that a charm quark has the same charge as an up quark, so both of them have a positive two-thirds, the down quark is minus one-third, so together they give us a positive one charge. And a bottom quark has the same charge as a charm quark, so again, bottom is plus two-thirds, up is plus two-thirds, down is minus one-third. The two up quarks, both are plus two-thirds, strange is minus a third, and here, plus two-thirds, both of these are minus one-third, so they're neutral. Two downs, or minus one-third, and a strange is minus one-third, so the three combined form a minus one. The up is a plus two-thirds, each of the strange is minus one-third, so they cancel each other out. The down is minus a third, so are the two stranges, so that's minus one. And the charm is up two-thirds, the two stranges are minus a third, so that cancels out. The bottom is uh, plus two-thirds, the two stranges minus a third, so they cancel each other out. So that's how you find how the, the particles that they make up are, have a charge on them depending upon the charge of the different quarks. Notice the decay time. A stable particle like a proton will last pretty well forever. Neutrons only last for about 15 minutes in the free format. And then look at the time that these other particles exist. Less than one billionth of a second for every one of them. In some cases about a trillionth of a second and in some cases even less than that. So these particles are just fleeting particles of the several hundred baryons that can be made by quarks, only one is stable. The second one, neutrons, are somewhat stable. Those two particles make up pretty well all the visible matter in the universe, and all the other particles are just there and very momentary. So you say, well, are they important? They're important in our understanding how matter is made. And you can see that quarks will understand what quarks are and how they behave by looking at the decay time, how long they decay, and also looking at the decay particles, what particles shoot out from them when they go through their decay process. For example, when a neutron decays, it forms a proton, it shoots out the negative charge for, from the neutron so that the neutron become a positively charged proton, and it also shoots out some energy in the form of a what we call an anti-neutrino, an anti-electron electron neutrino. If we take a look at a lambda particle, so we can see that it decays into a, a proton and a negative pion, or in a neutron and a neutron pion. If we take a look at a sigma, a positive sigma, it decays into a positive proton and a neutral pion, or a neutron and a positive pion. And if you take a look at a sigma particle, it decays into a lambda particle and a photon. And if you look at a neutral sigma, whoop, I already was there. 
if you take a look at a negative sigma, it decays into a neutron and into a negative pion and so forth. So you can see that these particles are only around for a very short period of time and they very quickly decay into something that's very different. So it looks like all these other baryons, these hundreds of baryons that we've discovered through our studies in the accelerators are particles that are only there very briefly because of the energy we put into them and then they very quickly decay to a more stable state and ultimately they all decay down to a proton or a neutron if the neutron is inside a nucleus. So that gives you a good idea of how quarks work. It seems like quarks were there to make protons and neutrons and any other particles made from these quarks are only there for a very short period of time. In the case of the exchange particles, like the mesons, of course, they have a real purpose because there's this exchange particle that goes back and forth, so the protons and neutrons and so forth can actually interact with each other. But other than that, there doesn't seem to be a lot of purpose for some of these hundreds of baryons that are only there for a very short fraction of time. So hopefully, again, that gives you an idea that quarks are there to make baryons, particles made up of three quarks, and that usually the interactive forces between them make them very unstable until we get to a state where we have a proton or a neutron under these conditions make, being made by those quarks. And hopefully that will help you understand again what quarks are all about.